folks. My name is Andy, and my family and I recently sold nearly all of our possessions, including our house that we spent most of the last year building, so that we could hit the road together in a fifth wheel and travel North America and make the world our classroom. We call ourselves the Everyday Renegades because that all feels a bit on the radical side, yet we sort of feel like everyday people in a lot of ways. I mean, we like hot showers, flush toilets, comfortable seats, bathroom faucets that don't completely suck. So to that end, yesterday I replaced this, this really crappy plastic piece of junk faucet that came with our fifth wheel, which is brand new by the way. Uh, I replaced it with a nice, not super fancy, but just nice and functional regular household faucet, single handle, instead of the two squeaky plastic, plastic hang, handle piece of junk that came with it. It turned out to be a very, very easy project, so I thought since I have another one to install in our second bathroom, I'd document it and uh, hopefully you'd find that useful and uh, might be willing to go ahead and swap out your junky RV uh, faucet for something that functions much better. Let's talk about what you're gonna need for this project and we'll get started. Okay, again, uh, this is the faucet that came uh, with our RV. Every bit of it is plastic. Uh, even the parts that look metal. Uh, and because of that, it's just, you know, it squeaks. This really squeaky, which is annoying. Uh, and it also surprisingly came, uh, you know, with a diffuser on here and everything that's rated at about two gallons per minute, which is kind of on the high side uh, when you're trying to conserve water in an RV. And the other thing about it that we really deny is we just don't like two-handled faucets, uh, especially when you're trying to save water and you turn the, the faucets on and off when you're brushing your teeth or when you're washing your hands, you turn them off while you're lathering up and things like that. Um, it ended up just contributing to a lot of water on the counter and uh, just in general, we did not like it. Uh, it also doesn't have much of a slope to it and my hands are, you know, are bigger than, uh, than tiny toddler children's hands, and so I could barely get my hands under there to wash it. So all that means uh, we look for something else that would go in its place. And we just went down to the local Home Depot and picked up this uh, Delta, you know, single-handled chrome faucet. Not much, a little over 50 bucks, I think. And um, which is, you know, uh, you could probably find one cheaper, but this all. This is all metal, it's, it's kind of quality, you know, it's got decent quality to it and things like that. So let's talk about what you'll find in a box like this if you just go to a store. I'm sure you can order one online as well, but you know, when you're traveling full time, it's actually kind of hard to get things uh, sent to you. So we just went to the local, you know, big box store and picked it, picked one out. Uh, when you open a box like this that comes from Delta or Glacier Bay or whatever uh, brand you, you're going to pick, you'll get the actual laboratory faucet. And since this is meant to go in a house, you'll get other things as well. Um, but the basics of it is the faucet. We chose single handle because we just like that a lot better. Um, and you'll get kind of this uh, transition plate. Um, and this, believe it or not, is all you need uh, if your RV is like mine. Uh, I don't know uh, if they all are, um, but I'm assuming that most of the recent ones are plumbed similar to the way ours is, and I'll show you that in a bit. Um, the other things that come in there, you know, is you've got your your big flat washers, which I'll show you. This goes on the countertop, and underneath this kind of goes on there like that. Hopefully you can see that, and I'll show you a, a better you know, angle of this underneath the actual countertop and then the nut goes on there and that's what holds it in place. We'll show that all in detail in just a bit. The other things that are in the box, uh, which can sometimes make for an intimidate, a more intimidating project if you're doing this in a household sink, is you actually have uh, 
uh, tailpiece that has the the plunger and all that sort of things attached to it. Most RVs that I've seen do not have these sorts of plungers, um, and you can just leave the tailpiece that's there, uh, the, the drain and the strainer and, and all that sorts of things. You don't need any of this, which really dramatically simplifies the project. So to that end, uh, the tools that you'll need is uh, to remove the existing sink. Really, you don't need any. It's on there with these uh, hand tightened uh, washer nut uh, combo things. Uh, this is this is the only thing that you uh, have to do. The the actual water lines are PEX pipes, just plastic pipes that have an integrated hand, you know, uh, workable nut. Uh, attachment that goes on there it's kind of like a hose attachment um, and you can just remove those without any tools whatsoever just your hands so to remove it it's very simple I'll show that uh, in detail but to put this uh, new one on that we have we'll need something to tighten these these nuts right there now you might uh, choose a, a, a box wrench or an end wrench or something like that uh, I happen to, for whatever reason, not have uh, precisely the right size in a box wrench. I do have an end wrench that's the right size, but I used it and it just wasn't as convenient as just a simple pair of channel locks or even a regular pair of pliers might even work. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we go to install it. The other thing that you'll probably want is since RV lavatories are very tight spaces, you'll probably want a flashlight because no light gets in there. Uh, so some sort of flashlight that you can turn and adjust or whatever will make your life a lot easier. Other than that, it's a very simple project. A uh, pair of pliers and maybe, uh, I don't have it with me, but maybe a bit of uh, silicone or plumber's caulk or some sort of sealant if you're afraid of water getting in and damaging your countertop. You can put a little bit of sealant on here and I think I'm going to do that this time around as well. Now the first step in any plumbing project is to turn the water supply off. Please don't forget this step. So we use just a simple Y attachment on our plumbing so uh, you can turn the full spigot off. I'm just gonna turn our the Y attachment which feeds our whole uh, RV to the off position and then I'm also going to drain the water from the system using our outdoor shower port, which is right here. So I just plug the shower in, let it drain down, turn both the hot and the cold off, and it will just relieve the, the pressure in the lines so that when I disconnect the bathroom faucet sink, there shouldn't be much excess water to you know, mop up with a towel. All right, so this is the existing faucet. You can tell it does not come out very far or up very high. The new faucet will come up high, allow, allow you a lot more room to get your hands under and also just be of better quality. And uh, I forgot to mention, it's also rated at only, uh, although you can get different diffusers and things like that, but the ones that we bought came uh, already rated at 1.2 gallons per minute, which is a lot better than the two gallons per minute that these ones are rated at. All right, so this is what it looks like underneath the sink. You've got uh, the hot and cold uh, hose lines coming to uh, the threaded ends of the faucet. It's a good idea to remember which side the hot and cold are on. If it's not uh, something that you are used to doing every day, just remember uh, hot's usually on the left, cold's usually on the right, and uh, hook them back up in that same order uh, when we get to the new uh, sink. Now, uh, this uh, on a un somewhat unrelated note, you can tell if you look around here, this brand new RV uh, already has some evidence of uh, water damage. Um, I didn't catch it quite soon enough, but after a, a several days of using our new uh, coach, this uh, hot water uh, line was not was not screwed on tight enough, and had had a slow leak that uh, my daughter had to point out to me since this is their 
bathroom and just took a couple you know like a couple extra turns on there and that stopped it but um, just another thing that you always got to check these sorts of connections uh, in your whether your rig is uh, used or new or, or whatever but so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these they uh, are very you know uh, easy to do and again I have the water turned off so make sure that you do as well and I'm gonna need two hands so I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down but you can just disconnect these uh, with your hand. Alright, so I got those hoses off and just kind of tucked them out of the way a little bit. And the next step is to remove whatever sort of uh, washer or threaded uh, nut is holding on your faucet. Again, mine are just held on there with things that are, should come off yeah, with my hand. Now, if you they're a little tight or you can't quite get them, you might need to get a wrench up in here. But... Uh, it should come off just with a little persuasion. Now I'm going to go ahead and do these, uh, put the camera down and do these, get them off, but then uh, that's it. That uh, The old faucet should you know just pop right off from the top from there. All right, got those off, and the old faucet just lifts right out like that. You see you got two holes, which I made sure that I purchased a... Uh, a faucet that had two um, pipes going through instead of uh, going all through a center hole. You'll find some uh, faucets that are meant to go on a single hole and they might even have a plate that covers the two, but that would those are fine, but that means you'd have to drill another hole there. So I just went ahead and chose one that uh, I saw already kind of used the two holes like this, the four inch uh, apart holes, and I just thought that would make my life a lot easier. So that's what I chose um, because it would make for a much easier project. Now is a good time to go ahead and clean the counter around those holes. And I'm also going to put a little bead of uh, plumber's caulk down on this uh, transition plate just to kind of keep water from getting at the, uh, the countertop. Uh, holes there and I uh, don't want it to swell or anything like that. This is you know cheap materials in these RVs So I'm gonna try to protect a little bit with uh, some caulk All right, so I've got a small bead of caulk all on that uh, transition plate and I'm gonna gently Holding on to that plate and the faucet at the same time uh, It's easier with two hands, but uh, it, I'm gonna just gently put this in place now mine are lining up pretty well if yours do not these uh, those little Pipes can bend a little bit, that's uh, flexible copper, uh, or hopefully you don't have to drill the holes uh, any different, but it should just kind of pop right down in there. Line it up right where you want it. You don't want to have to move it too much. You can smooth this sort of caulk anyways with a wet finger, but I'm going to try to get it precisely where I want it so I don't have to move it around too much. Now the next step is to crawl back underneath and put those big washers and uh, the half inch, I think actually eight millimeter nuts on. All right, I'm being gentle and trying not to move the faucet around too much and smudge all that caulk. You notice these washers have a cutout and the bigger Kind of look like Pac-Man, and the Pac-Man uh, is going to want to kind of go around and get the center right on the threaded um, rod there, and the bigger part goes around, makes room for the pipe. So the washer goes in place, and try to get this nut on there. You might need to squeeze these pipes together just a little bit in order to get room for your nut. on in place and I'm going to double check once I get the second one on I'm going to double check that I didn't move the faucet too much but let me get this second one in place and see if I can get this nut on here hard to see I know these places are pretty tight but make sure that washer's 
all the way onto the threaded rod, this uh, Pac-Man washer, <laughs> and just finger tighten that nut, and then I am going to go uh, and double check that things are where I want them before I start to tighten those down. All right, everything looks good up top, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these nuts down. What I am ended up uh, choosing is, got my socket set out, I started to realize just how tight it was in this cabinet. The other cabinet was uh, had a lot more room, and I could get these, uh, uh, these channel locks on there, which I think, you know, still could work, but uh, I went ahead and figured out these are 8 millimeter nuts, and uh, I do have a metric socket set, so... In order to do it, I've got my extension rod on here and uh, my long 8 millimeter socket and that will allow me to get this uh, pretty tight. So get that one pretty tight. Get the other one. Get it on there. All right. And again, you don't have to, you really don't want to over tighten these. Um, you just want it tight enough where things won't move on you this one and I'm gonna get my wrench on it just a little bit in fact I might have to take my extension off extension off ha. Right on the end of my wrench and I really don't need much just a few turns should do it a few turns on the other one I'm not sure if I can get it there just make sure things don't move on you all right things feel pretty good all right so now that the faucet is held tight you're really just kind of sandwiching it you know with a little bit of pressure uh, on the countertop uh, then the next step is to connect your hot and cold water so remember you're looking at the faucet from above the uh, the hot will be on your left which from below it's the right and the cold will be on the other side so uh, that's it just make sure you know that you're getting that thread uh, you don't want to cross thread because these are plastic connections here you can really when you're going on to a, a copper and brass, you know, fittings like this, you can really um, kind of mess it up if you cross thread it, get it out of alignment. So just be careful, take it slow, and uh, make sure that's threaded on there correctly. All right. And that's pretty good. Get my cold on. That one went on pretty easy. We know it's threaded correctly. And then you just want it tight enough. There's, you know, mine, I looked in there, there's a little rubber kind of gasket, just like a hose in, so it really doesn't have to be that much, but we do not want it leaking. So, but we'll come back and check this after we turn the water on. So, all right, that was, that was it. Uh, you know, the faucet where you want it, two nuts, Connect it back up to the water, and we're ready to go outside and turn the water supply back on. Okay, so if you turned any faucets or anything like that on to help drain your lines, you want to turn those back off now. I'm going to turn my outdoor faucets off, and then I'm going to go turn my water line back on, and hopefully the faucet works as expected. back on all right so I'm back underneath and I'm just gonna kind of feel I like just kind of feel the connections 
Sometimes uh, if you don't have a tight connection, it's not immediately obvious, but uh, if you feel kind of the top here, and mine all feel dry, so that's good news. If you've got a slow leak, uh, and you just kind of run your your fingers around, you'll 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 come up with some sort of you know moisture, and that tells you you just got to tighten it up just a little bit more. Uh, these feel all dry. I'll, uh, keep an eye on them. I always like to check them a little bit, but these feel good. So I'm gonna go back up top, and we will. Test out our new faucet. All right, usually, uh, sometimes some air can work its way into the lines like this. Be a little bit uh, surprising at first, but the faucet works as expected. That's it. Super easy project. Uh, I really don't see any need for anyone to have to live with a junky RV faucet if they uh, make you unhappy at all. Uh, a few bucks at a big box store and uh, really, you know, 15, 20 minutes of your time and you can swap them out. Hope this helps.